Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, Amazon, Google, Snapchat, Pinterest, Instagram, Skype, Spotify. The list keeps growing of these things that are a part of our lives, part of our world. Um, they help us, all of these things, for communication, for information, and for entertainment. Now, we're talking about technology today, and we're going to focus on technology that helps us do those three things. There's awesome technology for our cars and our factories and everything else, but today we're going to focus on the technology that we use daily when it comes to communication, information, and entertainment. Um, we use all kinds of devices for these things, radio, CD players, iPods, iPads, tablets, personal computers, TVs, gaming systems, DVD players, smartphones. We even have a friend whose name is Alexa to help us out to even use the technology. So, you know, it's, it's out there, it's not going away, and it's only going to advance, and it's going to become more a part of our lives as we have entered this technological age that there's so much development going on. And so our whole life is being plugged in and charged to devices that help us to communicate, help us to exchange information, and help us to be entertained. And especially over the last probably 10 years, I mean, 10 years ago, I couldn't have named off some of those things on those lists. But the, they keep developing and new things come up that are supposed to make our lives better. And so we want to see what God says about technology, but he doesn't say anything about technology directly. Uh, but he gives us some guidelines for living, and we're going to plug these ancient guidelines into our modern world to help us figure it out. That pun was intended. So we're going to plug in these things into our lives. So one thing I want to say to the teenagers who are here today, you're the first generation that has been fully immersed in the whole smartphone world. I mean, before your generation came along, we did have some technology. You know, the generations that are here today remember when the internet started. We remember when we could have cell phones. We remember being able to plug in and the, the World Wide Web opened up our whole world of opportunities. But it was very stationary. We didn't have it with us 24 hours a day. We couldn't carry it around with us in our pockets. And so your generation is the first to be able to, to have this at your, at your fingertips. And so your generation is going to have to really figure out, how do we make this work in our life? The unfortunate side is that your parents and the generations before you aren't a whole lot of help in guiding you in how to do this. Because we grew up in a very different world. And we're trying to figure it out too. We're trying to figure out the role of technology in our own life, let alone to try to guide generations that follow us in what to do and what not to do. You know, there was a time there, there was no such thing as Wi-Fi. You know, there was no, there were no computers that you could carry around with you. And so we're figuring it out. And it's kind of like this. You know, when it comes to driving a car, parents don't just hand their kids the keys and say, go out there and drive and figure it all out and have a good road trip. You know, and a lot of you are in that stage where you've been learning to drive and, and you know that it takes practice. And a responsible parent wouldn't just hand over the keys without the proper training and practice that's there. Um, and, so, and so it's the same thing with technology. You know, we're handing technology over to the younger generations and we're kind of hoping you can figure it out. But we need to try to guide as well. And as we as older generations, as parents and grandparents... You know, we're trying to figure out how to guide the younger generation. And they understand it, and they get it so much quicker than we do, and they're taking off running with it, and we're like three steps behind, aren't we? Don't we feel like we're three steps behind? So we, we're all in this together, and we got to really work together. And so the younger generation has got this thing. If you guys are figuring out how to make this work so that it's not overtaking your life, teach us how to do it. You be the leaders that teach the world on how to do it. And as we as older people who are still getting used to this whole thing and adjusting with all the new things that come out, we're going to keep trying to guide the younger generation. We may get it right. We may get it wrong. We might come too strict sometimes. We might, get too, we might give you too much freedom sometimes, but we're trying to figure it out too. So today we're going to look at three principles that help all of us to deal with this. The three principles are moderation. In other words, does technology consume and control us? 
identity? Does technology change and conform us into something different than what, who we really are? And integrity, does technology compromise and corrupt us? And I promise you, when I was writing this out, I wasn't trying to get it all to be C's until I got to the very last bottom one, and I was compromised and what else, you know? I wanted to get a couple words, and I thought, hey, I got all C's going on here. I'll find a really good word and corrupt fit in really well because, in, because technology can corrupt us and cause us to compromise. So um, that was not planned, but it turned out that way. So we're going to look at moderation, identity, and integrity. So the first one here, moderation. Does technology consume us and control us? <clears throat> Last week, Lizzie was say, sharing a quote that or a statistic that, that teenagers will check their phones, they'll look at their screens about, about an average of a thousand times a day. Now, whether that's true or not, it's hard to, <laughs> I can't even begin to even start counting even how many times I look at my screen a day. But we definitely know that, that whenever we're in line at the cash register, I know this comes out. You know, if I'm waiting to pick up the kids from school, you're sitting in the car, this comes out. You're sitting in a waiting room someplace, this comes out. You know, anytime we got this spare pause in our lives, is it this what whips out? It's probably true for most of us. Um, <clears throat> the phone is a useful tool and it's a fun toy. There's nothing wrong with useful tools and fun toys. Useful tools, hammers and nails are useful tools. But what would you think if I wore a nail patch, an, 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 um, I'm a nail pouch around me every day from morning till night carried around my hammer and I just went around randomly pulling out, pulling out nails and hammering them into things. Oh, this could be tightened up. We could put the nail here. If I went through from morning till night, constantly picking up my hammer and hammering nails, you'd think I was crazy, didn't you? It's a useful tool, but you don't want to overuse it. You know, fun toys. You know, if I got up in the morning, the first thing I did was pull out my Etch-a-Sketch and started drawing something. And I walked around all day, and every time I had a spare minute, I was drawing something on my little Etch-a-Sketch. You guys know what those are, right? Etch-a-Sketches, okay? All right, you know? And I carried around with me everywhere I went, and I'm showing everybody my Etch-a-Sketch, you know, what I drew today. I mean, you'd think I was a little crazy, wouldn't you? Okay, it's a fun toy, but you don't want to get consumed by it. And this, our technology, our devices, they're useful tools, and they are fun toys, but we don't want to become over-dependent on them to where it becomes our morning till night um, way of life. Because we can get consumed with technology. We can get controlled by technology. And actually, you take, you take consume and control a little bit too far and it becomes the word addiction. And we even talk about that today. We talk about technology addictions, phone addictions. I mean, you know, Netflix is doing everything they can to get you addicted, so you're going to binge watch, right? Binge. You know, even a few years ago, you would never have imagined taking a TV series and watching all 26 episodes in one day. I mean, that was unheard of. But now we're encouraged to do that. And how many of you have sat there and just gone from one to the next to the next? Maybe not 26 episodes in a row, or maybe, maybe, okay, all right. But sometimes you go three or four or five and pretty soon three or four hours have passed and you just get sucked into it. So there is a sense that, that technology can consume and can control us. Um, are addictions part of God's will for our life? No. No. Ephesians 5.18. Ephesians 5.18 tells us, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. You know, alcoholism is, a, is, um, is an addiction. And, and we're compared to be filled with the Spirit. Let the Spirit be your addiction. Let it be so that you're controlled by the Spirit from the time you wake up till the time you go to bed. Forget the hammer, forget the etch-a-sketch, forget the cell phone, forget the Netflix. Are we controlled by the Spirit from morning till night? Are we controlled by all these other things in our life? We have to ask ourselves the question. Are we being controlled by the Spirit? Now, could we still use technology and be filled with the Spirit? Of course we can. Because there's a lot of great things that come with all the technology and devices and things that we have there. But we want to be able to be checking our heart. Am I connected to the Spirit? More often than we're checking to see if we've got a text message or checking to see how many likes we got on our post. Are we checking our heart to make sure that we are being filled with the Spirit? 
so that we're known by that and not by being controlled and consumed by our technology. So use our technology, but use it with one of the gifts of the Spirit. The very last gift of the Spirit in the list in Galatians 5, does anybody know what that is? The very last one that's listed? Self-control. The Holy Spirit helps us have self-control. And if we're struggling with losing ourselves by being consumed by technology and all it has, ask the Holy Spirit, give me self-control. Give me self-control to turn it off and put it down and to leave it alone so that I can be about other things that God wants me to be about. And so that's one of the things we can do. Your, in the bulletin, I try to put several pieces of advice in there about things you can do. Um, just for example, what if you just had one hour a day that you set aside, not an hour a day that you're busy working, but an hour a day in your free time that you just, you, everything's turned off. Just have one hour that you're not checking your phone, that you're not turning on the TV, you're not turning on the music. Have an hour a day. It might be in your car when you're driving. It could be when you're doing housework. It could be before an hour before you go to bed. Just reserve an hour a day to say, I'm, I'm not going to be plugging in. I'm not going to be checking things for one hour, just to have an hour to be alone with our thoughts or to be alone with God or to be able to just have some silence in our lives. Maybe even take it a day of the week, you know, a whole day without any, without any technology, without any devices. You know, if, if you need to, sometimes just take a fast from it. Put it, turn it off, put it aside. Let the most significant people you know say, hey, I'm not going to be connected today. You know, if you need to find me, come knock on my door, okay? So uh, there's ways we could do to, to pull back when we need to. Um, simple things. No technology during meals. Turn off the TV, turn off the music, put the phone in the other room, put it in the box away from everything while we're eating. Um, no technology in bed because it does hinder sleep, we're told. Um, use your car time for silence, for prayer. Um, or conversation with the people in the car things like that you know is the first thing you do when you wake up is check your technology you know maybe let maybe let God have our first moments of the day maybe before we go to bed give God our last moments of the day you know some things like that that we can do so that we're not consumed and controlled by technology so anyway if you find yourself feeling like you're consumed and controlled by it Get alone with God. Say, God, work on my heart so that my heart will be filled with the Spirit and I'll be controlled by you and not by all the devices and the screens and the sounds of my life. So that's moderation. Identity. Does technology change and conform us? You know, we hear that little beep beep and we jump up from what we're doing and go get it, right? You know, we're, we're already conditioned to be able to, we're changed. We've been conformed by the things that are there. We love the immediate and convenient communication that technology has given to us. You know, text messages, Skype, email, posts. It's, it, we're, it's, it's almost expected that we have to keep up with everything else and we have to keep everybody else informed, don't we? It's, it's, an, it's basically an expectation that we have to do that. Waiting for communication to happen is hard for us. And knowing what to communicate sometimes is hard. Do I post this? Do I not? Is this giving too much information or not? You know, do people really care about what I have had for dinner tonight? There was, you know, we, we got to work on those things and figure it all out. It's sometimes it's easy with our modern, modern age to stay an inch deep with everybody, but never find anybody to go deep with. With in the amazing era that we have of communication, people report that loneliness is going up out the roof. How can people be so lonely when we're so connected? Because maybe our connections aren't doing it for us. Maybe our communication needs something more than just having all these devices to help us do it. A long, not too long ago, if we wanted to communicate with somebody, there was a phone, but long distance cost a lot of money, so we didn't use that very much. You could sit down and write a letter you write a letter, put the stamp on it, go down to the mailbox, deliver it. It gets there in two or three days. You get an answer back in a few days. I mean, there was something really beautiful about that. For those of you that enjoyed that era, isn't there something beautiful about that? You know, writing the letter, getting the letter and reading it from somebody and actually 
you know, being able to answer it back and wait and anticipation. You go to the mailbox every day. Is there a letter back? Some, you, you remember that, you know? That those days are almost lost now. The anticipation is there. The things that bond us together because we're constantly in touch with each other. Face-to-face has always been, always will be, the best form of communication of all. You know, being able to be face-to-face might not be convenient and as fast as using the technology, but if we avoid the face-to-face, then we're missing out. There's something about being face-to-face when you can actually see the expressions, when you can just be able to to see that communication is more than just the words, but the nonverbals as well. To be able to see the emotions. The emotions are so much better than these little emojis that we put on things, right? To see the real smile, to see the questioning look, to see the frustration on the other person's face. To, To the younger generation, please don't lose this, you know? We're afraid, the older generation, the younger generation's losing it. We're afraid you guys are gonna lose that face-to-face contact, that you're gonna forget how to be able to to talk to somebody face-to-face. Isn't that what we're worried about? Yes, we're worried about that. You know, make sure that you don't lose that. Make sure that you spend time face-to-face and don't just everybody sit at home in their own houses and text each other all day long. Get together, see the face, hear the words, do things together and create memories. You know, all those million pictures we put on Instagram, those are forgotten by the next day. But when we do something together, we create memories that last forever, for many years in our lives. So make the memories, do the face-to-face. That's the way God created us um, to be able to do that. When it comes to information, really quickly here, there's a lot to say about that. I mean... I mean, we, I mean, who needs a library or encyclopedias anymore, right? Because we have Google. It's right there, you know? And we're so guilty. We're in the middle of a TV show. We see somebody like, oh, where have we seen that before? And one of us is Googling up. You know, what other shows were they in? Because we want to know. We want to know immediately everything that we are wanting to know. But actually, since we have it all right there, we don't have to learn things anymore. They're struggling with this at school. Educators are struggling with this because kids just have to know how to find knowledge rather than put it in their brains, right? That's one of the things they're struggling with, okay? We're, we're actually getting dumbed down. So you younger generation, okay, be careful. Keep learning. Don't just know where to find it, but learn it. Put it in your head. You know, when I was in college... I probably had about 20 or 30 of my friends' phone numbers memorized because you had to dial it up every single time or dial it up every single time, right? Okay? And you memorized them all, okay? And I stand before you today. I know my number, my wife's number, I know the church's number, and my mom's number. They're the only ones I know. I don't even know my kids' phone numbers. They're in my phone, but I don't even know them. If I didn't have my phone I had to reach them, I wouldn't know how to reach them. I'd have to ask somebody, can you give me their number, please, you know? Because we don't have to learn anymore. We don't have to remember. And we're getting dumbed down. And all of us at all ages, just because all the information is there, keep learning. Keep using your brains. Don't let everything stored up keep us from learning. Because God made us curious. God made our brains so fascinating. And we need to fill it up with all the great things that God's given to us. When it comes to entertainment, you know, before the, before, the, before the advent of the TV set, living rooms, people talked in them, they played games, they, did, they had activities in their living rooms. And then the TV set came in and the living room became known as the TV, you know, and you had to arrange the furniture so the TV, everybody could see the TV, right? So I mean, you're nodding your head, you remember those days, okay? Well, then when cable came in in the 80s and 90s and satellite, you know, it became even more important that the TV is at the center of the room um, and now you can watch anything anytime we have on demand and you don't have to be in the living room anymore so we have people in different rooms of the house all watching their same different things all at the same time on different devices and that a typical thing we see now you know even the living room is losing its drawing appeal so entertainment has changed incredibly um, no matter the age 
the, um, the, the statistics show that we're spending an average of five hours a day on entertainment. The average American is spending five hours a day on entertainment. That's TV, watching YouTube things, that's listening to music, that's being entertained. Five hours a day on the average. I mean, that's almost a third of our waking hours being entertained. You know, Netflix knows this, all right? I mean, they have 700, 700 new TV series coming out just this year. 700 just on one Netflix. They know, they know that if they put it out there, we'll watch it. And they are grabbing us, they are changing our habits because they want us to plug in to them and to watch what they're showing us. How many of you, and I know it's, it's the joke, but it's true. You know, we turn on the TV, we flip through 167 channels and we can't find anything we wanna watch. So we pick something to watch just because it's on, but it's not what we really turned on the TV to watch, is it? I mean, how many of us turn on the TV just to see what's on? Not because we wanna directly watch this at this certain time. You know, we've we got to be careful because it's starting to control us and to change our habits. And we watch it just to watch it. Real quickly, entertainment, the gaming industry, you know, video games. Way back, it started out with a little Atari kind of thing that hooked up to your TV set. But now, we take the games with us. And people of all ages are getting into the gaming thing. There was a time... When yes, we would sit down and have a three-hour Monopoly game. Remember those days? Three-hour Monopoly game. But we were interacting. We were arguing. We were, we were dealing. And we were, we were just holding our breath, throwing the dice, hoping we'd get past Park Place and Boardwalk, you know? I mean, we were interacting, you know? And yes, now you get on your video games, you can interact with other players on there, but you're not really interacting in that face-to-face -face way. We're losing that. Nothing wrong with the game, nothing wrong with having fun, but it is starting to change and conform us. You know, Fortnite, okay? It's been out for almost a year, okay? It's, if you've never heard of it, it's the most popular game amongst young people now. Not just young people, but it's a big game, Fortnite. Nothing wrong with Fortnite, but just in less than a year, it has earned a billion dollars just from in-game purchases. That's not buying the game that's actually adding things and i mean they got their own little store and whole whole, whole little economy there a billion dollars has been spent in less than a year on this game it changes us it conforms us and we got to be careful that we're not becoming um, pawns to those that are just trying to use us for their for their uh purposes there's nothing wrong with entertainment but we don't want entertainment to overtake our lives. You know, the, the next verse here. We're told that God created man and woman in his own image. He created, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We're creating God's image. Are we going to let those that run the entertainment and communication and information highways form us into their image? No, let's be in God's image. Let's not let the world overtake us so that we become mere robots in their whole system of technology. So we need a wake-up call. Again, technology is not bad, but we can't let it change us to where we become somebody different than what God intends us to be. So keep being face-to-face, -face, keep being a student and learn, and don't waste time with useless information just because it's out there. We don't have to read every single post of everybody we know on planet Earth every single day. We don't have to watch every episode of everything on Netflix. We don't have to look up every Pinterest idea about what to do with those pine cones in our yard, okay? <laughs> Just because it's there doesn't mean we have to chase after it. So spend time with God. I mean, those five hours a day we spend in entertainment, couldn't we, we cut it in half and spend an extra two and a half doing something that's more than what God has given us to do? You know, let's not waste our time on these things and let it change us. The last thing quickly here, integrity. Does technology compromise and corrupt us? Technology has heightened the level of evil that comes out of mankind. 
Social media leads people into petty arguments and getting all mad at each other, unfriending each other because people say things that hurt each other's feelings, and it just divides people. If you were to combine all the internet traffic of Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined, that's how much traffic every day is going to pornography. There's a lot of it out there. Many of the TV shows aimed at teenagers are either dark and depressing, or they're so full of disrespect and sarcasm that they're learning those ways. You know, it's, it's so easy to go shopping, but are we addicted to buying more and more just because it's easy to sit there at our, at our kitchen table and just look in through all the showrooms that are there and click, 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 buy, buy, buy? You've heard the sage advice, don't compare your real life to someone else's exaggerated online content, right? And that's what's happening. We live in an age right now where this younger generation, okay, they see the world of their friends because their friends post online. A few friends get together and they're doing something. They put the pictures online and wait a minute, I'm sitting home alone. Why wasn't I invited? Why aren't I having that fun? And teenagers are feeling like they're left out, that their life is is not as good and they're more lonely than the, the people around them. Adults do it too. We see, the, we see the best moments that people put on, how they're proud of their kids and their grandkids and their car and their house and their garden and this and that and everything else. And we say, wow, they got a happier life than I have because they're putting their best moments out there. And we're looking at our worst moments in the mirror, right? And so we're becoming a people who are becoming more depressed and more lonely because of the barriers that are happening because of our perceptions about technology and the world around us. So the evils are out there. You know, envy, dishonesty, lust, greed, anger, divisions, all these things have happened. Not because technology is bad, but because there are things that are in our heart and technology's pulled them out. Jesus reminded us in Mark 7, 15, there's nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. We can't blame all of our problems on the things that are out there. Those things that come into us are not what brings out the evil. The evil's already inside of us. We're born with sinful hearts. And certain things out there trigger them that bring them out and brings out the evil that's there. And so we need to be careful that technology is not triggering the evil inside of us, the sin inside of us, and causing us to become corrupt and to be, compromise our faith. Matthew 6, 21, Jesus says, where your treasure is, there is your heart. Is our treasure in our screens and the sounds that we hear? Or is our true treasure of our heart the things that really matter? The things that our faith with God and the relationships God's given to us and the responsibilities that God's given us on this earth. If we love those things, then we're not going to be so distracted and let technology ruin us. Ecclesiastes 10.10 says, if an axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. And if we apply this right now, we don't want to become a dull axe, an unsharpened axe. We don't want to have to like work so hard to figure our life out because technology is pulling us down. We don't want to have to do that, but let's use skills. Let's be successful and not let it ruin us. There's so much more to say about this, but hopefully this creates a conversation starter in your own heart before God and with one another and your families, with your spouses. Be able to talk about where does, where does technology fit into our lives and how can we honor God with our technology and sometimes without our technology. So I'll ask God to do that for us. Let me pray. Dear God, I...